Spring's U.S. Women's Open, presented by the brands of Ebonite International. So we're here at the Ebonite Test Center. My name is Del Warren, Vice President of the Kegel Training Center, and this is topic number three, um, a favorite of, um, I'm sure, most of the participants' equipment. So we're going to be talking about how to create an arsenal. Each one of the participants can be bringing a series of bowling balls, and how they match those balls and what balls they select is really um, going to have a lot to do with how well they bowl. It's a very important element of our game today um, on, on gameplay and matching up. So. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how to build an arsenal, and let's start with um, uh, the fresh part of the lane, bowling on the fresh, uh, freshly oiled lanes. Uh, Kelly, a little bit about how you plan on attacking a pattern and what balls you're going to choose and, on the fresh and the layouts. Well, I'm going to start with my benchmark ball, and for me that most likely will be a game breaker. Just a, a very versatile bowling ball in itself. You can drill it many different ways and have great reaction out of all those different drillings. For me, Typically how I play the lane is I try to break it down right to left. Whether it's on tour or any pattern I'm bowling on, I will try to get as close to the track as possible and play a tighter angle towards it. As they break down, I'll transition to something most likely a stronger ball, which for me would be a Mission 2.0. Pearlized cover, one of the strongest Ebonites ever made. It'll allow me to get to my comfort area a lot quicker, circle the lane a little bit more, and have the same angle entry into the pocket. So with a, on the fresh, would you be using uh, medium pins, uh, stronger pins? Most likely I'd be using a medium pin layout for me. And for me, that would be about a four and a half inch pin for my PAP. Um, again, it'll give me some length through the front, but kind of mellow everything. Give me that mid lane read that I like to see. Mm -hmm. And again, try to get the ball to the pocket as, as best I can. Well, another question I'm sure everyone has, would you be using more like pin above the fingers, pin up, or pin down? For me, matching up my rev rate and my ball speed, most often enough it'll be a pin up. So somewhere around the ring finger, just to the right of it, or slightly above it, um, probably the CG kicked out a little bit, a nice 45 degree angle, something that's very smooth. And for me, holes always help me. So uh, surface would be out of the box, something smooth, maybe 2000. Again, I can always alter it with my hand and manipulate it. But that's going to be the benchmark where I start out, and from there I can decipher whether I want to go further inward with a stronger ball, or possibly even move further outside with a weaker ball. Great. Liz, does that, uh, does that sound about what you're going to do, or are you going to attack them a little bit differently? Um, I think I'm going to attack them a little bit differently, where I may go something a little bit stronger than my benchmark ball. I'm going to start out with a uh, mission. It's uh, one that I liked on the fresh with a, about a four inch pin, uh, probably right out of the box. And uh, it was a uh, gave me uh, early earlier roll and a uh, nice even arc to the back end. And uh, depending on the, how the back ends were, if they were or, uh, pretty pretty strong in the back. Um, I could kind of make my angles either move a little right and move mm -hmm. a little left and uh, just go off of that. Okay, and I, and I noticed you had very smooth ball reaction with that. Mm -hmm. And again, do you usually, uh, are you going to use a, a, a pin up to start or a pin down? Uh, the one that I use is a little higher pin. It's about a four inch pin and uh, with a big weight hole. Okay, so pretty aggressive layout and uh, one of the things I like about this pattern is because they're is some definition built into the pattern. You can start with some fairly strong equipment, whereas on a, maybe a sport pattern with um, a little bit flatter pattern, you would uh, go a little bit weaker um, to try to control the ball. But there is some, um, there's some room out there to start, and uh, the dry is fairly dry and the wet is fairly wet. So that will allow um, everyone to start with a little bit stronger equipment. Um, myself, um, when I bowl on the pattern, um, I tend to like to use on the fresh pin downs. Um, one and a half inch pin, uh, 45 degree drill angle, and uh, something very smooth. Um, again, I, I, my uh, mission is kind of my benchmark ball that allows me to play on a lot of different uh, lane conditions. And it's very smooth, gives me a good read. And uh, with the friction down lane, uh, you're going to need to have a little bit of control coming out of the gate. So um, that's really how we're going to attack the fresh. So as we've uh, defined the ball and the pin placement, now let's talk a little bit about something pretty basic but very important, which is surface preparation. Um, Kelly, you know, what kind of surface do you think you're going to start off on the fresh? I will tend to use a ball that's somewhere around 2,000 box finish. Um, it allows me to see that smooth type reaction very seldom do I use 4,000. And it will give me the ability, if I need to make the ball start up sooner, I can always hit it by hand with either another 2,000 Aberlon pad or 1,000 and go down and grit. So, 2000 pretty much is benchmark with that ball itself, and from there I can make a decision whether I need something stronger or something weaker. 
Now, would you change that if that was uh, uh, on HPL versus Pro Amvaline? I would. I mean, again, the surface is going to dictate what I'm going to put on the bowling ball itself. 2000 is just a, a beginner mark for me to start off with. So if I'm bowling on Pro Amvaline where it tends to be harder and slicker and tighter down the lane, I will most likely go to a stronger type surface, maybe 1000 Avalon and see if I can get the ball to start up more in the mid lane. Very good. Liz, you talked about your mission and a, a four inch pin with a weight hole, pretty strong ball, pretty strong layout. Uh, what kind of surface are you going to use on that? I'll probably end up using a 2000 uh, grit also. Um, if, I, if I need to see my ball read just a little sooner, I'll probably take a, a 1000 Avalon pad, a brand new one, and uh, just hit that by hand. Just let the ball read a little, a little earlier. Well, and, and I'm, I'm kind of in the same category. Um, I like 2000, it's, uh, it's my favorite surface on the fresh. Um, and I, at the Kegel Training Center on this particular pattern, it was no different, uh, but I did cut my ball back down to 500 and I brought it back up to 2000, so I actually had a, a fresh 2000. So um, the other uh, tip I would have for people is, um, and, I, and you touched on it very well, um, it's easier, you, you get a chance to modify your surface during practice. So it'd be much easier to bring it down a little bit as opposed to try to rub some polish on it or, or actually bring a 2,000 up to 4,000 by hand in the bowler's area. So that, it is something for you to consider when you enter competition, um, knowing your game and knowing the bowling center that you're going to be bowling on, that you, you can change that surface uh, during practice. Okay, so as we said earlier in the segment, um, we're going to talk about a three ball arsenal uh, for, for the fresh, for transition, and when the lanes get uh, pretty dry and burnt. And so uh, for the transition, Kelly, what do you think? Uh, what do you think is going to work for you after that fresh ball has kind of outlived its uh, resource, and now you got to make a move and you got to make a ball change? Well, for me to go to a stronger ball in our arsenal, it would be the Mission 2.0. It's a strong asymmetric. Again, probably four and a half to maybe five inch pin. It's got the highest percentage of pearlization that Ebonite has ever produced, so it allows it to clear the fronts really, really well, but still give me that mid lane roll and strong continuation in the back end. So it's, it's really my go-to ball right now, and um, I'm still going to be using it for a long time to come. Again, it just allows me to creep further inside with my feet, get the ball down through the front portion of the lane, and still give me that continuation in the back. Do you think you'll uh, be using 4,000, or do you think you'll be using some polish on that? Um, you know, with as much volume of oil that is still considerably in the mid portion of the lane, I will most likely just use 2,000 out of the box. Wow. Yeah. Great. Interesting. Liz, how are you going to attack them? I would probably uh, go to what is my benchmark ball, uh, my Taboo. Uh, it's about a four and a half inch pin, four and a half, five inch pin, and a little higher pin. And uh, probably be out of the box right around 2,000. Uh, that ball can go anywhere from probably 1,000 to 4,000. It's, it's pretty versatile as far as the surface goes. So um, probably about 2,000 though. And uh, that one I can stay right on top of it. And his, it's a little cleaner and be a little more angular through the back part of the lane. So probably be one where I could uh, move a little bit left and have a little more forgiveness. So you say, you keep saying you want to stay on top of it, that that, that means that you're, you're you're going to try to stay right as long as you can. Yeah, I'll try to um, stay right. Use a little bit of equipment, ball speed, loft, and, in order to stay out so you can kind of play your A game most of the time. Yeah. Sometimes though, it gets, it'll get me in trouble where, you know, you, your left, your moves left or, you know, uh, you miss left and you right and you miss right and you can't do that for, you can only do that for so long and, and try to create different uh, tricks for so long and then uh, that's when you got to move. Well I know most of the uh, uh, audience and I'm, I'm actually very surprised that neither one of you are, are really going to go up in surface all that much during the first transition. So again that goes right back to the type of pattern we have where you have quite a bit of volume in the middle of the lane. Now, again we're 5.2 to 1 in, in, in ratio. And, so as you move in just a little bit, you're still catching quite a bit of oil. Um, so again, you're going to make a ball change, but you're not really going to make a surface change. Myself, um, usually in the, in the first transition, I know, and a lot of the girls on the Weber team, we would probably go to something more like 4,000. Uh, we certainly, in the first transition, would not be, be going to polish quite, quite yet. But uh, we do like that smooth finish, that 4,000 surface. Avalon is just a, is just a wonderful finish because it allows that ball to get through the front part of the lane. But you, you know, you don't get the over under down the lane because you still have a fresh surface on the bowling ball, and uh, you get great response. So, again, uh, a lot of different ways to attack this. Um, the theme here is that there's still a lot of volume in the middle of the lane, and that uh, you may make a ball change, but you're not going to go right to polish right in the first transition. 
And for me, Dell, because I have a higher rev rate than most of the ladies out there, I know I'm going to be one or two zones further inside of them, so that allows me to use stronger surface on the bowling ball and, and give me the left to right that everyone else is going to have down the lane. Well, very good. This is uh, certainly right now it's turned out to be a very interesting conversation. And uh, for those of you watching, again, it, it really boils down to your style, how you like to see the lane, uh, you know, what part of the lane you like to move into, and, uh, and how comfortable you are. Because in the end, it's really about getting comfortable and playing your A game uh, in order to score your best. So the final part in the, in the equipment segment is really talk about how you play the lanes when they burn up, they get dry, when they get wet dry, when you got to move in, et cetera, et cetera. And I know for a lot of the ladies um, in, in uh, my coaching career and in, again, working with uh, the Weber team, um, this sometimes gets uh, the girls a little bit nervous because they believe that they don't throw enough bowling ball and they can't move inside the third arrow. And uh, a lot of times the shot really gets nice when it gets in. And um, we really want to talk about a little bit today is what each one of you do. And, and also reiterate with the equipment that's out there today that with a little different um, strategy um, that they can certainly score very well from the inside part of the lane. So Kelly, I want to start with you. We've gone through the transition and now you're going to go to your third or fourth ball. Uh, what kind of, what ball are you going to choose? What layout? What surface? Um, for me, that final ball in my arsenal would be the game on. It's uh, got a high differential to it. Once the flare enough in the back would be very, very continuous for me. So the more I have to be away from the pocket, the more energy the ball needs to get back to it, I want to go to a ball that's going to give me that continuation in the back portion of the lane. For that's 2,000 out of the box, polished, so the polish will give me the clear through the front portion of the lane. Um, because I'm deeper, I'm hoping not to open up my angles too wide. Uh, the goal is to really, when they become challenging, you have to make shots, is to not give up the 1-3 pocket. So most likely my focal point will be at the 3-pin, just trying to keep somewhat of a tighter closed angle mm -hmm. and um, executing, making those shots, hopefully kick out the 10. And worst case scenario, if I ring 10 or flat 10, I just pick up the spare and, and hopefully find a, a few frames to string a few strikes together. Well, that's certainly a good tip because um, uh, as you move in, you do tend to leave a few more corners. And certainly in a major championship, you want to be patient. Um, and that's, uh, uh, you know, uh, as I've talked to a lot of pros and I've, I've bowled majors myself, it, the, the whole key in a longer format tournament uh, with the type of field that you that you typically run into, you really have to be patient through the, the entire course of the of the event. Liz, um, the lanes are burned up. I know you. I know you like to play your A game and you like to stay on top of it. But when they really, really, um, when they get dry, uh, what do you, what's your plan? Uh, I probably go to my third ball, which would be my my burst. Uh, it's a, a symmetrical ball. It's really clean through the front. It has a good amount of uh, in the mid lane, in the back end. Uh, I don't want to give up, obviously I won't give up the pocket too much, uh, I'll probably uh, give it a little bit more ball speed than, uh, than just trying to roll it and trying to keep it at medium speed. And uh, probably between the second and third arrow, maybe a little bit deeper than that. And uh, like I said, without too much angle through the front, because uh, then you really kind of get into that OB area outside, outside the track. So mm -hmm. trying to, try to still keep it in, you know, right on the third arrow. And you'll be throwing a polished surface probably? Yeah, just po a polished. Okay. Well, and, and it's interesting because what I hear is um, a lot of times folks think as you move in, you increase your angles. Um, but um, as we've seen over and over again, especially uh, at the level that you all bowl, is we're going to be actually closing our angles down a little bit and actually moving our focal points closer to the three pin, maybe just to the right of the three pin, uh, keeping the ball in line and letting, uh, letting the surface and the, the ball really dictate what, uh, what the ball motion is going to be. Um, I'm, I would either go either way with uh, either myself or some of the girls. If the lane's really wet dry, we're going to go with more of a five and a half inch pin down hard ball. Um, if the lanes are a little more blended, we'll, we'll actually go with a five inch or a five and a half inch pin up hard ball. So it really depends on how the fronts are playing, the back ends, and, and whether the, the, the pattern actually stays a little more blended or if they ended up getting very, very wet dry. And, that's one thing that I, I don't think we saw 10 years ago is when, when, the, when we moved in, we actually opened our angles up. Today, the lane can really break down to where you want to keep everything closer to the, to the three pin, which allows, again, multiple styles to play. And, and for the ladies out there, um, if you make a good shot and, and get your angles going towards the three pin with the right ball, you'll throw plenty of ball um, to knock down the corner pins and, and to get to the five pin. Uh, wouldn't you agree with that? I would, absolutely. So again, uh, you know, uh, what I love about this pattern is it's gonna, there's enough volume to last, there's enough buildup in the middle, 
so that uh, the, it will last all the way through the blocks. And at the same time, it will allow everybody to play multiple parts of the lane and have multiple strategies to win. And I think that's really the best case scenario and, and the most fair for this um, you know, very long and prestigious championship. Hi, I'm Kelly Kulik, 2010 U.S. Open Women's Champion. I invite you ladies to come on out and sharpen your skills and learn about the game of bowling. You will be entitled to work with some of the best coaches there is in the sport of bowling. If you're looking to sharpen your skills, learn about the U.S. Open pattern, and someday be a future competitor in this event, I encourage you to come out, put on your shoes, tie them up, and give it a go. You too can bowl to win. Bowling's U.S. Women's Open. Presented by the brands of Ebonite International.